Oh, my name is Margaret Ann Windsor. Um, the name given me when I was kidnapped and brought to uh, Molson from Buckingham Palace in 41 and taken to Molson, Alabama. The name given me was uh, Peggy Ann Dempsey, and I married the Childers. Uh, I'm going to skip from the horrible birth because this woman uh, that I grew up being told she was my mother, Lina, uh, both twins were dead, and they gave me the name of Peggy. Um, the twins were illegitimate, they were called back then. Nowadays, it's not such a stigma, but back then it was horrible, especially out in the country. So I grew up being told that, that I was Peggy and told I didn't have a father, called bastard, called every name, treated. There's no way to put down in words the life that I lived at their hands. And um, the mother, Lina, had actually killed both the twins, and the family covered it up because she would have faced the gas chamber. And Cortland Air Base was being built near Molson, and that's, you know, your FBI and all that way back then, your New World Order, your Freemasons were in place. So I have to assume that I was brought in there at the base and um, then put in the hands of Lina Dempsey and that horrible family. But I wanted to skip to uh, when I did the book in 1977 and 78. Um, I had um, done a medical malpractice book. Uh, on mind control, and I had to work for um, doctors, and uh, the I found out that one patient was head of a corporation, a huge one, and one of the doctors that I worked for had actually placed a chip in him, and um, in the heart bypass, and uh, by that you can um, use mind control and programming to um, the decision making becomes yours or the agency's doing it. Uh, you can have them do anything, uh, make suicide, make it look like suicide when they've killed themselves and are commanded to. Uh, you can create illnesses and cure them as far back as the Tesla file. And, um, well, you can do anything with it. You can uh, program an army <laughs> to go out and kill. Uh, you can program one person. Um, I'll name you a couple, Steve McQueen, um, Scarsdale Diet Lady. Um, that spent time in Bedford. <laughs> um, Harris was her name. She was a um, school teacher, I believe. Uh, but anyway, uh, Timothy McVeigh was one of them later on. But you can do anything with it. And what you don't even need all this now. It's so sophisticated. I was writing this back in 77, 78, and I was living at Moonraker Apartments, which had been owned by Penthouse Magazine, and they were owned by the Mormon Church when I was there, out of Utah. They were very nice. They were attached to Journey's Inn Restaurant, which was, at the time, one of the nicer ones. Now, that's the only time that I lived in a really nice apartment, and I lived through such hell there. I wish I hadn't gone there, you know. Um, but anyway, um that's when I was doing the book, and Larry Flint was shot in um, uh, March the 6th of 78, uh, next door in Lawrenceville, Georgia. His attorney was killed, and um, the person that uh, shot him was programmed to do it, so he was acting under mind control. Now that I'm going to go to, we moved into Laurelwood and um, apartments, and uh the man in my book was MD, a license to kill. And we moved, I moved with the boys, I was divorced, and moved into Laurelwood Apartments. 
Well, Carol Johnson, a friend of mine, uh, told me so much was happening to me and the boys. The uh, um, They were having uh, sugar put in the lifters of their cars, and the cars was going out on the interstate when one of my sons would get off at night, and uh, they were terrorizing us. And so she suggested I let my ex-husband come back. Well, my ex-husband had been diagnosed as a psychopath. He was. And, um, I, you know, I found out later he was CIA. So the whole, my marriage to him was planned uh, ahead of time. Uh, I met him in Huntsville, and he was working uh, in the space program, uh, NASA. Um, so I'm back to then. At Laurelwood, I signed the contract, my deposit, and on... May of the 8th is when I moved in, and I had gone to a little satellite FBI office out in Marietta. They had been there for years, and Agent Guest, now I don't know if that was his real name or not, I think he was probably a good guy. Uh, a few weeks later, um, that satellite office is shut down. So there's a reason and pattern to all this. So I'm at Laurelwood, and I want to say this is where one of the doctors, the Jewish doctors that was a part of the mess, uh, had a dog name, and it was uh, Alaskan, uh, Malmute, and it was named Juno. Now, before I ever went to Laurelwood, this dog was loose up there. Now, he lived in a, he lived in a nice place, Terrell Mill Estates. Uh, so the dog had been turned loose there. Uh, and I ran into it, I guess, when I was looking at the apartments. So later, Juneau, Alaska is where Larry McDonald, the doctor I wrote about, congressman whose plane went down, took off from Juneau the Soul, and it crashed into the ocean. It was shot down by the Korean jetliner. Um, well, he was on the jetliner. It was shot down by the um, Russian MiG. Uh, so I'm trying to show a few connections, uh, and that's over time. So let me go back to Laurelwood. It was my money. My I signed it. Nobody was with me. Um, so much was happening, though, that Carol suggested I let my ex-husband come back. And I made the mistake of, well, I don't know if it's a mistake or not. I didn't have much, uh, you know, you got to do something. Uh, there were spiders being put in the house, and they were all in the apartment. They were all over the place, and I'd never seen anything like them. They were downstairs in Scott's room. You'd step on the steps to go down, and you'd step on one of these huge spiders. Finally, I called out, I called, I believe it was Sears that finally came out and told me what the spiders were. And they weren't even from the, this area. They were from, I believe they told me, if they told me correctly, a South American uh, place. And I don't remember how poisonous or if they were. They scared me to death. Um, I was afraid they were going to hurt the boys. So all kinds of stuff was being done to us to terrorize us. So my ex-husband um, was going to move back in. So to make sure that everything was okay, I took him up to Laurelwood Manager. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it's just the manager or assistant was there too, but I introduced her to John, and I didn't put him on a lease. I just told her that he had come back to stay with us for a while because things were happening to my children, and I was doing the book. Well, she told me at that time that her, uh, so she knew this, he wasn't on the lease, nothing. He was an ex-husband. And um, she told me at that time that her, I believe it was uncle, it was real close, the nephew or uncle had been in charge of the Patty Hearst uh, kidnapping. So at that point, I didn't know why she was telling me that. So now then, my ex-husband moves in, and uh, he didn't come back to protect us, let me tell you. Uh, so... On June the 23rd, I had gone to FBI headquarters downtown Atlanta, and it was because of a wiretapping. Of course, you can be set up that way uh, to make you look like you're back then. Well, something's wrong with you there. Uh, who's tapping your phone? Well, I went to the FBI with it, 
And let me say this, that Philip I grew up with thinking he was a half-brother. He's with the ATF. And, um, I mean, they got him. So um, after back then, Philip was not my friend, okay? Um, but anyway, the FBI got a letter from him June the 23rd of um, 79 while living at Laurelwood. And um, it was signed by William Harper, um, the, uh, com the U.S. attorney in Atlanta, and uh, sent to them by the FBI of an ongoing investigation, national security involved. So what's national security got to do with it? I, at that time, I didn't know about being kidnapped in my real name. So the harassment and the hell goes on. So at and I want to mention the murder of Gene Seberg here, um, November of 79. And if you look up her murder, you will see that Quintel Pro, the international police, uh, were responsible. And the fact that they made it look like suicide, they harassed her, they did everything in the book. If you use mind control, you can cause people to appear to commit suicide when they didn't. It's murder. Mind control is like a knife or a gun. It's a weapon you use. It's just that how do you prove it? It's invisible who is doing the mind control. And I want to put this here. Uh, a lot of these mind control, uh, like um, um, Tucson or, um, well, I'm skipping here, um, Sandy Hook, um, Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes. The motive, they don't know the motive. They're under mind control. They don't even know it. They don't even know that they're going to kill somebody, so they don't have a chance to stop and not do it. They don't know they're going to do it. They're programmed. So the motive lies within the person or agency doing the programming. And so how are you going to find that out? Um, so I'm back to the apartment in... Um, um, I've gone to the FBI headquarters and um, gotten the letter. And so this is on. My ex-husband keeps wanting to move the apartment within Laurelwood, the same complex, but he wants to uh, move it on up to the end where there's some woods and stuff up there. Well, I don't want to because I've gone up there and I got sick when I looked at these apartments. They were older and painted and musty. And so I said no. And... Things got so bad, uh, even with a letter from the FBI, that, uh, and I was going to uh, word processing school, a uh, CIT program that was held at um, Lockheed Marietta there. And uh, I remember the Aussies were there, the uh, Australian two young men were there, and they would have come into the concession room and have lunch and stuff with and sit down and talk to me. And they made a point of telling me they had come to take back what belonged to them. And they meant me. Now, I don't know over time if so much time has changed how Australia feels or anything, but they're Brits. Um, everything's been stolen from us. So anyway, um, they proceeded to tell me a lot of the things that they were made to do by the American government. And one of them was to buy those big transport planes, uh, something that, they, well, anyway, the transport, huge, got the big, I've forgotten. But they had, that was just one of the things they had to do. Of course, they've had to fight uh, with the Americans, which is fighting against ourselves. The Brits fighting for Americans, excuse me. So I don't sound like I'm rambling. So I'm going back to um, uh, I didn't want to move um into the other apartments there, and they had no intention. Well, it was so bad that um, I talked with my husband, ex-husband's um, sister, Laura, and she was in Abilene, Texas then. She was CPA. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say her name, last name. It's uh, Laura Childers Klein, and uh, she now lives outside Austin. I mean, they've done all this stuff to me, and I can't say their name. 
So uh, I'm going to cut this off so it goes and pick up on a second take.